what do you think that Rodgers can bring to the table for the Jets going into the season? He brings them veteran leadership. He brings them consistency. And he brings them a, a, a veteran quarterback that can go out and actually win you a football game. Whereas Zach Wilson, when you put it in his hands, more than likely he'd probably lose you one. And to go into context what the trade was, the Jets send the 13th overall pick, a 2023 second round pick, which is the number 42 pick this year, a sixth round pick this year, which is number 207, and a conditional 2024 second round pick, which becomes a first round pick if Aaron Rodgers plays more than 65% of the snaps. In exchange, Green Bay sent over Aaron Rodgers the 15th overall pick, so the 13th and 15th were just swapped, and Green Bay also sends over a 2023 fifth round pick, uh, number number 170 overall this year. So, what the Jets can do right now is they can they can make the playoffs. I think that they got really close last year without Aaron. And with Aaron, I think that with the receiving core, Brees Hall coming back off an ACL injury, and that defense only getting stronger, that there is no reason why the New York Jets cannot make a playoff run, whether that is a surprising division title or if that ends up being an actual wild card berth. So what I'm looking at is, with a strong, sturdy defense and a young receiving core, Aaron Rodgers gets both things that he needed most. Somebody to support him on the back end when the offense is struggling, and somebody to go out there and catch him passes and make some consistent route running like with Garrett Wilson and the supporting cast that's over there. I'm looking at Aaron and I'm saying the win now window is right now, whether that is this year or next year. That's it. Aaron Rodgers turns 40 this year, if not already turned 40. We saw Brady play into 44-45. But we also saw a lot of weak moments from Aaron Rodgers last season. Now, you can make the argument because their offensive line was injured. They had to deal with some rookie receivers. Um, their defense wasn't exactly the greatest in the world. He struggled for a number of things. But his decision-making in some games, especially in the Detroit game, the first Detroit game that they had played earlier on in the season, he had three red zone interceptions that were all on him. Those were all decision-making. That had nothing to do with the pass rush. That had nothing to do with the receivers dropping a pass. Aaron Rodgers made those decisions. Made those decisions. Now, similar to his predecessor, Brett Favre thought he had a lot left in the tank, in which he was then traded to the Jets after 16 seasons. Kind of weird how history is repeating itself. A defensive-focused team that needed a quarterback to make that run, to make that jump. And then, obviously, it did not pan out the way that everybody had thought. And then Brett Favre goes to Minnesota and leads them almost to an NFC championship. Or was it in the Bowl. NFC? To a Super Bowl. Almost to a Super Bowl, excuse me, because they lost in the NFC Championship to the Saints. I want to say I have faith in Aaron Rodgers because of what he's done. But usually when we base my uh, our opinions off of history, it kind of makes things look biased because Aaron is not 29. Aaron is not 32. Aaron is not coming off of an MVP season. Was he the year before? Yes. But new team, different coaching staff, different receivers... I don't necessarily know if the Jets have a definitive identity. Obviously, everybody knows them, especially after last year being known for a, a defensive team. But if he can just provide you with 32, 3,400 yards, a positive 2-to-1 touchdown interception ratio, maybe 24 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, something around that magnitude, I think the Jets can make some noise in the playoffs. I'm not going to go out there and say they're going to make an AFC Championship or a Super Bowl, but I see them making it out of the first round at least going into the second round, and again, competing to get into the AFC Championship. But Aaron Rodgers also being up there in age also means that you got to worry about his health. How many hits he can take, how long he can last, and how he meshes with these new teammates is all dependent upon the offensive line and Aaron Rodgers having patience, which we know he does not have any. So only time will tell. It's an immediate upgrade from Zach Wilson, yes, but in terms of how long this will last, it's, to me maximum two years. I think when it comes to Rodgers being their future quarterback going into this upcoming year, I mean, he's an immediate upgrade over Zach Wilson. I mean, there's nothing to talk about here. Zach Wilson has, I, I hate putting it in these terms, but it is true. He's relatively been a scrub in his early NFL career. And as far as I see it with this move, the Jets are in a situation very similar to what the Bucks presented themselves with when they went after Brady. They're in a win-now mode, and they're trying to obviously get a Super Bowl championship until Aaron Rodgers either A, decides to leave, or B, retires. How long he's going to play? Kev, I think it's going to be two to three years max. You know, Granted, last year in Green Bay didn't work out for him. They missed the playoffs. 
didn't necessarily have the best year. But, I mean, just a couple years ago, Kev, Aaron Rodgers is an MVP caliber quarterback. I mean, this was a team in Green Bay that was constantly in the NFC Championship game, and they just fell short. They just they couldn't make that extra step to get to the Super Bowl. But I think in this situation, I think he will be in a better overall position with the Jets this year upcoming compared to what he had last year with Green Bay. I think to me, this comes down to whether or not that the Jets can win a Super Bowl. And the idea is very entertaining when it comes to the Jets you know, competing for a Super Bowl. I think that there is a better pathway for the Jets to make a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers at the helm compared to what Green Bay had last year. Um, just because I think the Jets, from an overall perspective, have a much more stronger team to work with than the Packers did this past year. But, you know, if, if I'm looking at this, if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there for two to three years in New York, I'm not banking highly that the Jets are going to find a way to make a Super Bowl appearance. And it really kind of comes down to the landscape of the AFC. This AFC is stacked. The amount of competition that the Jets are going to have to face, not only this year, but the year after that, and then the year after that, it is going to be an uphill battle, to say the least. I mean, we could just talk about the AFC East, which the Jets reside in, in that division. You're going to have to go up against Josh Allen and the Bills. The Bills are always a team that is in competition for at least an AFC Divisional AFC Championship game, and an outside shot to make a Super Bowl. Miami made the playoffs last year as a wild card team. Those are going to be two teams that you're going to have to compete against at a high level to be able to get past them. And the Patriots aren't going to be a walkthrough team either. You know, I'm saying the Patriots are probably the weakest team in the AFC right now, but they're not necessarily a pushover team either. And then after that, you know, you can look at the AFC West. You got to deal with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. You got Justin Herbert and the Chargers. You've got Russell Wilson. And Denver, Denver is looking for a bounce back year after a, a horrendous season last year. And then you kick it to the AFC North. You got to deal with Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. You got Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, and he just resigned a massive five year deal. And the Ravens added some pieces to their wide receiving core on top of that. So, I mean, just from a quarterback competition perspective in the AFC, Aaron Rodgers is going to have to compete against. I'd say five to six elite. You could even probably say seven quarterbacks who are either in an elite territory or, or a superstar talent. It is This is a night and day difference from what he was dealing with in the NFC, where over the last couple of years, the, the talent in the NFC has taken a drop off compared to what they were maybe five to six, seven years ago. I think that the Jets are going to be a successful team compared to what they were last year when we finally get through the season, they're going to be better than a 7-10 and 10 team as far as I see it. They're going to make the playoffs. I think it just kind of comes down to can they, win the, can they win the division or will they make a wild card spot? And I think that there's a good chance that they will hit one of those marks. I think the division is going to be tricky. I think the Bills are probably still the best team in the AFC East, but I still think a wild card spot is something that they can achieve. And then We'll see where it goes from there. 